This is called Museum of the Moon, an artwork created by UK artist Luke Durham. Luke Durham is a British installation artist who creates sculptures and large installations. The moon is one of his signature art pieces that featured 120 DPI details, NARSA imagery of the lunar surface. And here are some white rabbits created by Australian artist Amanda Perr. She also makes large scale installations. In this particular case, rabbit are not native in Australia, but imported by European colonists in the 18th century. The artist created the giant sized rabbit to raise questions about our relationship with the natural world and then the environmental crisis. Here's the thing, neither of these two artists work got anything to do with the mid-autumn day, the moon festival. But both of them traveled far to Japan and to celebrate one of the most important festivals in Asia. What's the relationship between the moon and the rabbit? Before we get into that question, let's take a look at the festival first. For those of you who don't know much about the moon festival, it is a traditional festival that celebrates autumn harvest in Asian culture. The history of the Meat Autumn Festival dates back over 3,000 years. The festival is held on the 15th day of the eighth month of the Chinese lunisolar calendar with a full moon at night. Tsukimi, also translated to moon viewing, is a Japanese variant of the Meat Autumn Festival celebrated on the same day in the Chinese lunisolar calendar. Zhongqiujie is a Chinese way to say Mid Autumn Day. On this day, Chinese believe that moon is at, at its brightest, largest size. So it's a symbol of harmonious reunion. Family gather together. It's almost like a Chinese way of celebrating Thanksgiving. Both cultures associate rabbit with the moon. There are so many different folk tales in different cultures. The most common reason is long time ago when people watch the full moon, they see shadow of rabbit shape on the moon. In Japan, they see rabbit making mochi on the moon. And in China, they see rabbit making Chinese medicine. <laughs> so there are different kind of folk tale told by generations and generations also through different cultures into different countries. If you're interested, you can also search the moon legend also known as the Jade Rabbit story. There are tons of stories right there. People usually learn through their childhood education. If you're not interested about the traditional story, the traditional aspect, and if you're interested in the modern Japanese culture, you must know about the Japanese manga Sailor Moon. The main character, the schoolgirl from Sailor Moon, her name is Tsukino Usaki. Usaki means rabbit, Tsuki means moon. So her name translate to English is rabbit of the moon. Anyway, there are definitely lots of fascinating stories going around in different cultures. And those tales impressed us when we were a child. But never any of us had seen big giant moon and large sized rabbit in front of our eyes at the same time in real life. So thanks to the artist and the curator who made this fantasy come alive. There's definitely some magical chemistry and synergies happening while so many people come together to come see the art pieces. I also got the chance to ask questions at the artist talk with Amanda Perr. That's one of the beauty of art, she said, even though the original purpose of the artwork is to raise questions about environmental issues, but she always wondering how the art will be perceived through different cultures, because every culture will perceive a different way, but it's interesting to find out.
talk because we really want to see the rocket. <laughs> She didn't really explain a lot. Like she didn't make this artist statement such a big deal, but it made me more curious. What's the wrong with life? This way. <laughs> One thing the artist said, I really like. She said they're like so cute. Look at how cute that is. But the way, but she said from bottom to look up is not that cute. <laughs> it's not that cute because <laughs> you can tell that the rabbit. The material it's really like, I'm gonna just grab it it's plastic because she said for sustainable uh, purpose they use this material once I think every two years after two years they recycle it turn it into bags huh? yeah. <laughs> I think that's a cute one but it doesn't look like a bunny it looks like a Buddha For the rabbits project, there are five pieces and three of them are located around the shrine and then the other two pieces are located beside the moon. They definitely have different kind of vibe when you go through the art piece based on where they located and placed. Mm. So here's a very Japanese thing. This is like a, a QR code. You collect stem, so another stem rally. Japanese love stem rally. And what you can do is if you collect, like, you go four or five spots, you collect all the stems, you get a free NFT. Okay, we'll check how many, and if we have enough time, we'll go through and try to get an NFT. <laughs> How do you feel to or this close to move? It's very powerful actually with the sound. So this festival definitely gave me the autumn day a new interesting perspective and new opportunities to celebrate together. Another exciting thing is when you look at the work separately. Each art piece gives you the different vibe based on the sound, the materials, and how people interact. But when you see them together, it definitely makes me think about old imaginary stories, history of those folk tales, and how each culture has different way to tell the stories through generations, also shape the way we see things. Perhaps that's the power of large installations, and that's the power of art. The most fascinating thing about these artworks is that they are still traveling around the world separately through different medium, to different countries, different places, represented in different environment, different locations. It makes me wonder what kind of art they are going to collaborate next or what kind of environment or location they will be in for the next stop so if you get any chance check their work maybe you will know the moon is coming to italy next year or <laughs> some other places 
I'll keep checking, but I'm really interested in all if you have your own interpretation of the art piece. And that's it for today's episode. I really hope through this episode you get a better understanding of how we celebrate Mid Autumn Day, why the rabbit and moon is somehow connected even though you don't have chance to come to Tokyo see the two pieces together but I'm pretty sure in the future you can see one of the work maybe two of them in different locations I also like to know what is your interpretation of moon and rabbit when you see them together or separately is there any particular meaning that in your culture that is completely different with ours I also like to know that. Please comment our video. If you like my video, please click like and subscribe my channel for new updates every week. I like to bring you to new places, new culture events, different art projects to know more, understand more about Japan, Tokyo. I want to share my ex exciting experience with every one of you and I want to send all the happy vibe great energy to everyone in the world that is watching this video thank you so much thanks for watching see you guys in the next video bye